Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to create your own custom service module. Um, we're going to call it hello service dot module. You need to create a hello service folder inside of sites default modules custom, which is where I like to put my custom modules. Uh, we're going to add a dot info, which is required uh, for Drupal modules. It's how Drupal discovers that this folder is actually a module. Um, we need to add hello service dot module, which is going to contain the code for the module itself. And we're going to implement hook service, which is the um, basically hook service returns an array of key arrays that define each of the methods that 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 ser that service module provides. And then we're just going to check it out in the service browser and make sure it works. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Sites, all, modules, don't need that. Custom, let me create a folder here, call it hello service. I can't see what that says. I'm going to add a new file here, call it hello service.info. And I need to set up a few things in here. This is um, essentially like help information about this module. You give it a name, uh, you give it a description, and you can also um, give it a package which um, groups. You can basically, you can group modules in packages and the only place that that shows up is on the, the, the modules page uh, in the admin. So when you have a, a site that has you know, 50 different modules on it, it can be helpful to kind of have some kind of grouping there. So the name is um, Hello Service. Description provides Hello. Method. Can I give a plug here? Sure. I actually created a desktop application. It's called the Drupal uh, Theme Starter. And actually, I'm going to be doing one for modules as well. So what the application does is it's like a GUI, and it lets you fill in all this info, and it'll write your .info file for you. So you can get that right now for themes, and I got the modules one coming soon. Nice. It's for Drupal 6 right now, but I mean, it, Dot info works on Drupal 5 modules too, so. Does it write modules? <laughs> <laughs> I have I stayed up many nights and been very close to doing my own generator because actually module builder doesn't work in D6 for me, so. I and I like that guy. He was a cool one. Yeah. Yeah, all right. There's also, if anybody uses TextMate here, I think there's a TextMate bundle. It just got approved. It just got improved? Uh, approved. Approved. Yeah, um, so it's actually on Mac Mate. It's going into TechMate? Blake, Blake just made awesome. a post it's on their site. about did, it. Yeah. Did Blake, um, did, he, did he create it? Who I wrote that? He broke part of it, I think. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, he's created, it was collected okay. by like three or four people, yes. Okay. I mean, it's a good bundle to cool. have if you use TechMate. Awesome. But not if you don't use TechMate. And if you use Dreamweaver, I did the, Dream, uh, the Drupal API for Dreamweaver. That's a free download. So hit me up if you don't know where to get it, but it's listed on Drupal's site. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. Sure. Um, so we just set up a name, uh, gave the module a name, a description, put it in the services-services package, um, gives you that grouping on the modules page. And then also we gave it a dependency of services. So if you actually tried to enable this module and, and services wasn't enabled, Drupal would automatically prompt you and uh, say that you need to enable it. You need to enable services, and it'll do that for you. Um, and the package is where it appears in the list of modules, correct? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a grouping on the modules page. 
So someone could like download your hello service, put it on, but they didn't have the service module, and it would show up that they needed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. Does anybody know what what it does if the mo if the module doesn't actually exist? I think it just disables the yeah, well, like checkbox. Or yeah, you can't even you can't even enable it. You can't even try to enable it. It disables the checkbox. In other words, if you had the checkbox unchecked, it, it would deactivate it when it on the save. Yeah. So inside of hello service dot module, we're going to do the hook service. And the way that the Drupal hook system works, just briefly, um, Typically in, inside of a Drupal module, every function name is prefixed with the name of the module itself. So we have to prefix the, the function name with hello service. And then because the service is called hook underscore service, um, we need to add another service at the end there. So this is essentially, to implement this hook, we're doing the name of the module underscore service. That's why you see service service. Might not totally make sense, but that's why I'm doing that. And this hook basically returns an array. Um, I'm just going to return that array directly. It's an array of, a, of keyed arrays. So each keyed array within that array represents a module definition. So right here we're going to define hello.say. Create a new array for that. The first key we need to define is method, and that's the name of the method um, that, that we can call from remote. So if you saw like earlier, we had node.load. That's the, um, the method key. We're going to call this one hello.say. Second one is callback, which is the PHP function that this method makes, um, maps to. And again, we need to prefix this with the name of the module. And I'm going to call that say. We also need to implement an args key, which is where we're going to define the arguments. And this is also an array of key arrays. So we're going to open up a new array there. And there's only one argument here, um, and that is a string. The args um, key, or array, uh, first key we need to implement is called name. This is more of just a help thing. It shows up in the service browser, so you have an idea of what that arg actually represents. I'm just going to call that what. Um, the type is the, the actual data type. It's a string. And description is also a, a help feature. It shows up in the services browser. I'm just going to describe what that uh, argument actually is. And the T function, for those of you aren't, that aren't familiar, it's um, an internal Drupal API function that um, allows you to translate text. So anywhere that you're you're outputting English text, you should wrap in, in the T function. I'm just going to say what to say. Um, that should be it there. The last thing is um, the help key, which is like any, it's any addi additional information that you want to give to that module. So we're just going to say, uh, it's not the module, the method. We're going to say this, we pass a string to this function, and it will send it back. And now we need to actually write that callback. Um, hello service say. That's one of the nice things about TechMate. You guys see that? I just type that in escape, and it finishes it. Um, what is the only argument we have there? And all we're going to do is just return this and say 
Yeah, because the text is right here. It actually it doesn't do just function names. It does anywhere that text exists in the, in the file. Yeah. I find myself using that more than anything else. Just hit escape. Just hit escape, and it just anywhere if it finds it on the page, it'll and it'll cycle through too. So if you saw that, if I just type H, it cycles through all the different. Yeah, and it actually will cycle through um, known function names as well that don't exist on the page. Um, that should be it. So if we go to our services browser now, we should be able, to, well, we have to go to the modules page first. See, so we see hello service there. Then enable it. And then go over to my services page. Click on hello.say here. Drupal said, so we see that work. Cool, so that's how you write your own module. And you can do anything you want in there. Um, you, re you basically return native PHP data types and those get translated by whatever server module um, you're actually using. Um, if it's XML RPC, it gets serial serialized into XML and then on the client side, it gets translated back into a native data type to whatever language you're using. It's cool stuff. So we don't need to change this function if we're using XMLRPC or AMFPHP or SOAP or anything. So for every custom service, essentially, that we want to control, uh, we would basically be making a bunch of these service modules, mm -hmm. correct? So that's another thing. You, you don't ha always have to Code a service module. You should see if there's you know core functionality that you can use first services that exist. You can do a lot with just node load and views. Um, that view get view everything. service. You views have, right? get view services like the, the mother of all services. It's, it's great. Um, but if you needed, if you had some sort of specific operation or you wanted to contribute to services, this is how you would create a service. Next, we're going to call that hello service from XML on PC and just see how that works. The only thing we need to do is we need to make a new uh, XML RPC request that queries the hello.say method instead of the node.load method and just change the parameters so that we're just passing in a string there. Show you that. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this line here and paste it below. And I'm also going to comment out that first one. And I'm going to change our method name here to hello.say. I'm going to delete the second argument here. Uh, one, two, there. And I'm just going to say, Pull it up in the browser. Should have been all we need to do. Yeah, <coughs> you see down at the bottom there. We got that back from Drupal. So it, it sent hello R, from hello from our XML RPC to Drupal, and Drupal spit back. Drupal said hello from XML RPC. So it kind of went round robin, came back. That's it. That was easy. Can Next. You scroll up and show the XML. Yeah, sure. So um, this is the, the request in a, in a PHP print R. Um, XML RPC actually takes that request and 
turns it into XML, basically. And this is what the XML RPC format looks like. Uh, it passes the method name as well as the params. It's saying that we only have one param, value is a string, and there's the string there. This is the actual piece of XML that's being sent to Drupal. And then on the Drupal end, it's translating that back into a PHP string, sending that to that uh, PHP callback function, spitting back the string, which is then being converted back to XML, which is the response, this piece of XML right here. Not the response, brand, brand. <coughs> value, and it's a string. So you can see how that works. Cool. Are there any data types that don't map between PHP and Flash? Um, anybody want to answer that? What's the question? Are there, the question is, are there any data types that don't map between PHP and Flash? Um, I don't think so. I don't think that's an issue. But if you had like a custom class in, uh, in PHP, it would probably end up as just a regular ActionScript object unless you had set up specific class mapping uh, between those data types. So like if I, if I set up um, you know, teacher as an as a actual class in PHP, class teacher you know, bracket, set up all the data and actually sent that over the wire, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily know to map that to a, uh, an ActionScript class called teacher. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Unless you set up, like AMF PHP actually has a, a, a capability to map what they call value objects uh, in PHP to, to classes in ActionScript. So we could, we could define um, classes that relate to node types. Um, on the PHP end, like let's say we had a story class and send that over to Flash and we would have a, we would have a class in, in Flash called story. And, it, and the AMF um, parser on the flash end would know to map that object. But it, it takes additional work to do that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It can be useful because if you wanted to put like additional methods on that class in ActionScript, you could, you know, formatting or different things that you might want to do. Next thing I want to show you is how to call that.